Hello there, my name is Hocus, and welcome back to another episode on the Ramblecraft server. This is episode four, and I hope you're having a great day, first of all, and second of all, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. So we are over on the Mushroom at the moment, the shopping district, and things are developing once again, guys. So let's take a small tour and just see what's going on here. So first of all, we've got ourselves a community tasks board. So Hudlin, Chaster and I began kind of trying to figure out a road, a road network for this place because we don't want to have everybody building in random locations and then make it uh, or find it difficult to connect them with roads at the end. So we've, we've, we've got started on that. So we're just placing down some notifications to let people know that they can help work on that. And we're thinking about using the diamond stack as some sort of reward just to uh, entice and incite people to get those tasks finished, you know, but uh, we're still working out the kinks with that. So uh, we'll leave it as it is for now, but that is the community tasks board right there. And you may have also caught a glimpse of this. This is Hudlin's second shop. So uh, first of all, Hudlin, name your shop. Come on. We're waiting for a name. I, I can't buy anything until it's named. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but I guess this shop is nameless at the moment. And let me just take a step back. This, uh, this shop, you, you can probably guess what it sells immediately, but I just want to say a really, really nice idea from Hudlin. He's built a tiny ocean monument here. And then on the inside, as you probably would have already guessed, he's selling prismarine bricks, one diamond per stack. He's selling sea lanterns, again, one diamond per stack. And finally, he's selling the other prismarine or the, the normal prismarine, not, not the brick form for, again, one diamond per stack. So nice work from Hudlin. He obviously has himself a uh, garden farm set up, which is which is pretty cool this early on. But uh, let's go ahead and check our shop and see if we've made any more profits since last time. I'm guessing not because it hasn't been long since I finished up recording the last episode. Uh, but we'll check either way. I did recently stock the logs. Nothing, nothing yet in there. And again, just a single diamond in this chest. So, so far, no more profits, but we're still working on it. Well guys, today is gonna be a big one because I am going to economically flip this server on its head and turn the tables in my favor. More on that in just a moment. Before though, whoopsie daisy, let's get that camera right, there we go. Before I do go into detail for my plan, I'm gonna come back into uh, to Hudlin's original shop and there are a few purchases I wanna make. So he's uh, selling some equipment and I think it would honestly just be very beneficial for us to pick up some of this stuff. So we'll take the diamond boots and we'll also take the leggings and we'll just pay two diamonds each for those. And I can even just wipe the enchantments off these and re-enchant them, which makes this a very good price because I am paying two diamonds for leggings, which costs seven. I'm paying two diamonds for boots, which costs four. And I'm paying two diamonds for a chest plate, which costs eight. So we're saving ourselves a bunch of money and also upgrading our armor, which desperately needs to happen. This is it then, it's time to get our armor situation sorted out. So first of all, goodbye to the iron leggings, goodbye to the iron boots. You've both been great servants to me so far, but it is time to move on. So I think I'm gonna do exactly what I said earlier. I'm going to just strip the enchantments from these armor pieces and build up enough levels to uh, just get some enchantments that are more favorable. So some protection enchantments would be ideal. I maybe do wanna get fire protection again on one item, but uh, I'm hoping for a little bit more than just one enchantment each. So let's see what we can get. Well, you know what guys, that enchanting session definitely could have been a little bit better, but let's take a look at what we managed to get. So on the boots, we've got protection three and breaking three, on the leggings, protection four, and on the chest plate, protection four also. So this is definitely better than what we did have. We will maintain the cod's head for now, but just a quick disclaimer, as soon as we switch the elytra, the cod's head will also be switched out for a helmet just uh, to balance out the armor a little bit more so that we don't keep continually dying. Anyway, what is missing from the armor, guys? What is missing? I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to think about it. That's right, you got it. Mending is missing from the armor, and that is exactly the direction in which we are gonna take today's episode. So Kier and Dev are the only two players on the server that are currently able to buy and sell the books. They are working together, so pretty much there's only one person with access to mending books. But today, we're gonna to change that, and we are gonna flip the economical landscape of this server and hopefully turn it in our favor slightly. So the first step of this journey is to find ourselves a villager, which of course will be located in a village. Hmm, very interesting, very interesting. So I tracked down what I think is the nearest village and there is a nether portal, a crafting bench. Looks like someone has definitely been here. So uh, let's, let's just see where this leads and we can figure out whether or not we're gonna be able to do anything with this. 
Oh, wow, there are already villagers here? Okay. I need to figure out whose tunnel this is because I don't want to go using it if, uh, if that isn't okay. But it looks like somebody's actually dug out a tunnel that leads certainly somewhere. <laughs> I mean, obviously. But let's, uh, let's see if we can actually get a glance at where this goes. Oh, wow. It goes very, very far. So I'm going to see if I can work out whose this is. Um, it might be end of ours, actually, and he is online. So let me just have a quick talk to him. All right, guys, nice. So fortunately, Endivar was the creator of this tunnel. He also was the creator of the portal. And I've asked him right here, can we strike a deal for me to use the tunnel? And he said, no deal necessary, go for it. What a great guy. But we will be sure to drop something off for him because I am definitely gonna repay him for this service. This is gonna save me a bunch of time. And he also asked about the witch hut. I told him that he's free to use it. And he's also just let me know that he's got a librarian trading silt touch for five emeralds, which is a very nice trade. So what we're going to do is try and grab ourselves a villager. Oh, oh no, this is not good. Uh Oh, no, 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 villagers. Whew, right, we just about saved him. <laughs> I, I needed to think a bit quicker there, but we just about saved him by the look of it. We're actually going to need to get them out again because we need to be in the boat. <laughs> All right, guys, off we go embarking on the first voyage. We've got ourselves one villager. We're going to come back for the second a little bit later on. Wish me luck. Ooh, okay, guys, let's just take a moment to breathe. Those villagers are pesky and driving boats through the nether. Not fun, but we've got it done. And now I'm just going to ask another question. Do you guys remember this island from the last episode, the one that we just put the claim signs on? I didn't get any notifications from anybody that this was their land, and it doesn't appear as though anybody's placed down their own signs. So we're just going to go ahead and use it. And this is going to be the site of our villager area that we're going to use to generate uh, some enchanted books. So over here, we've got some capsules. In this one, we've got ourselves a villager, I believe. Yep, there is our uh, first villager. Seal him back up. In here is our zombie, and he has an item in his hand, so he shouldn't despawn. We're going to use him to get the better prices. And then in the final one here, we've got our second villager. So all we need to do now is start working on placing down some workstations. But before we do that, in fact, we should probably set something else up. So let's mark out some area maybe over here. looks like a good place. It's nice and flat. I'm going to mark out a little area for us to just build a breeding center in because I think we'll be better off if we actually had a few more villagers than what we currently have. So let's mark out an area about this big. Should do the trick. And what we're going to do is just build up some walls, place down some beds, and then start feeding the villagers once I funnel them in here. And that should allow us just to uh, generate a few more because the ones I've got over there, as I say, it's only two. It's uh, not a very decent number. And also they are slightly damaged. So if I can't get some potions on them, I think we're just better off breeding some new villagers. This build is definitely up there with one of the ugliest things I've ever built, but it will serve the purpose that we need it to. On the inside, we've got a bunch of space. I'm going to just make sure it's bright enough for spawns to not occur. And we'll make sure to get some villagers in there, or the two that we currently have anyway. But whilst we are figuring that out, I think it's a good time to start planting some bamboo. Now, bamboo is going to be the access point to the book. So we're going to use the bamboo to create sticks which will sell to the Fletchers, and that is how we'll get our emeralds. And then, of course, we will use those emeralds to purchase the books. And bamboo grows so fast that I have no, no trouble whatsoever, or I, I can't think of a reason why we wouldn't have enough sticks to trade, so that'll be enough for now. And then something else that's just really perfect about this island is that there are three sheep on here, and the sheep we can definitely keep using over and over again for the wool, which we'll use to craft beds for the villagers to sleep in. So all in all, this island is just perfect. And once again, I just can't believe that uh, it went unclaimed. I really can't believe it. Awesome, so we've got our guys inside of their little hidey box, and I'm thinking that we just make one of them a farmer immediately so that the feeding can be automatic. So. Let's go ahead and do something like this, maybe. We'll place down some water here, and then we'll go ahead and put the composter over top so that one of them becomes the farmer. There he is, perfect. And then we can just till the land around the composter. And I bought potatoes. Potatoes are a good food source for these guys. Shouldn't take too long to grow, and they also produce quite a bit when they do grow. I think we'll actually extend it uh, maybe all the way out like this. Yeah, that seems like a good enough uh, a good enough size. Now all we need to do is craft up some beds to give these guys and a few extra to get some uh, babies spawning. So let's see about doing that. We've already got a bunch of wool just from the sheep that are on the island, which is really nice. Uh, so maybe we'll limit ourselves at like five 
beds for now. That means there will be a total of five villagers on the island. I think that's a manageable number and probably will work for what we're trying to achieve here today. So if we do something like this, get down beds in the free space. That should just about do the trick. Now, uh, one thing I've realized that we are missing is the ability to brew the weakness potions, uh, which of course means we're going to have to find a brewing stand and find blaze rods, which could prove a bit of a challenge at the moment. We made it guys, we made it over to a fortress and we've got a spawner right here. So eventually what I decided to do was just to build a huge bridge or I guess it's also a tunnel, a huge bridge slash tunnel that leads all the way over to this fortress. And then that means I can get back and forth from here whenever required, as well as any of the other ramblers that want to use the pathway. So I think 12 would do us for now. I also picked up some nether wart and some soul sand so we can get some of that growing. Should be in about a good position to begin, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> to begin figuring out getting one of these villagers uh, converted and Oh, oh, darn it, darn it. Come on. I, I gotta be careful here. Gotta be really careful here. Yes, we we should be we should be uh in a position to start converting villagers, getting the right trades, and figuring out how we can use them to uh exploit some emeralds. Alright guys, so we're a little bit later on in the day in real life. I've actually been out to play a football game or soccer for you North Americans and have come back, but there has been a lot of things happening off camera. So I've set up a few farms. I'm trying to be as self-sustainable as possible here on the island because limiting trips back and forth to the base just speed things up really. So that's why we're trying to do that. We've also got the latest and greatest in personal defense right here. And you'll see why in just a moment because I've made a slight change to the cube. So on the inside, and you can see our population is slowly growing, on the inside we've actually got ourselves the zombie now, and I'm trying to figure out a way to turn the villagers into zombie villagers inside of a minecart if that's possible. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll figure that out in just a moment. However, for the time being, we need to get ourselves a mending villager to work with, so I'm going to be placing down this le lectern repeatedly until we get what we're looking for. So let's see, the first trade is protection one and for you guys that don't know you can just break the lectern and replace it and that should just re-roll the trades so this time no enchanted book we'll try one more time on camera and third time we get again no enchanted book okay we got him here he is it is a mending villager 24 emeralds not the best not the worst but i believe you can cure them up to five times in order to reduce their prices to the minimum so that is what we're gonna do i just now need to figure out how we're gonna go about zombifying this dude and i also have one more concern the fact that uh, i'm not entirely sure whether we need to trade with him beforehand in order for him to lock the trades but uh, i guess we'll soon find out Cool, so I think as soon as I left the cube thing there, the zombie focused his attention on the villager and zombified him. I heard some strange sounds in there anyway. So let's get prepared everything else we're gonna need. So first of all, we'll take a brewing stand and some blaze powder to power it. And we'll do something like that. We'll go ahead and fill up three glass bottles so that we can make the potions required. And those will be splash potions of weakness. So we'll stick three in there our nether warts, and I believe they are crafted using fermented spider eyes, which is something like this. Uh, perhaps not. Oh, it's the brown mushroom. Okay, that's fine. We've got brown mushrooms as well, I believe. Yep, we do. Good, good. Okay, so brown mushroom, spider eye, and sugar should do the trick. Perfect. And then gunpowder to make it a splash potion. So we can go ahead and stick that in there. No, not today. <laughs> uh, what? Okay, that didn't work. Let's try something else then. Maybe the spider eye just goes straight in instead of the nether wart. That could be the case. All right, back in you go. Okay, so that's how this one works. You have to put the spider eye straight in. Okay, that's fine. And then gunpowder, and then we're going to need some of these golden apples. I've already got one. But we may need a few more, so I've bought some crafting materials over. We'll actually go ahead and just take one more right away. We'll definitely need at least one more, uh, but that's that's where we'll take it for now. Just keep the two, and then let's get... Yes, perfect. Let's get those brewed into splash potions. And here we go, our very first test subject. So first of all, splash potion of weakness. I'm going to take a step back. And then right-click with the golden apple. <laughs> and the strange noises begin to occur. What we've got to do now is wait. 
All right, sweet. So that seems to have done the trick. Unfortunately, <laughs> it did the wrong trick. So you can see that since we didn't trade, his original trades didn't lock in. And this guy actually took over the mantle for the lectern here. So we we did it right, but uh, I was correct with my concerns about the trading thing at the start to lock in the trade. So we need to redo that entire process, but this time, as soon as we find our mending villager, we need to make sure to make one trade with him so that his trades are locked in, and then that should force the zombie to remain as the uh, as a librarian once they return back to normal. Never mind, guys. Slight development in things over here inside of the cube, which uh, <laughs> I've kind of named this place now, the cube. I have no idea why it's not a cube, but look at this. So if we break this and replace it and ensure that this is the guy that attaches himself to the lectern workstation, he actually remembers that we cured him. So he has really reduced prices. So I guess all we need to do now is keep breaking and replacing until we manage to get the trade that we're looking for. Infinity. I think this is one emerald, right? I don't know for sure, but I'm think I think this is saying one emerald in the book for infinity. So it seems as though we'll get a very nice deal once we do get that mending trade back. And the way I'm forcing this is I've actually made some fletching tables because we're going to be using this stick trade here to make ourselves the emeralds to pay for the mending books. So I figured that we may as well just go ahead with that and just use this guy as our test subject for the librarian side of things. Okay guys, let's just go over some updates. So I was able to capture a couple of mushrooms from the Mushroom Island and I've placed them in this little pen here. So we're gonna breed those up and use them for their leather. We have also just cured our villager for the second time and I did manage to get the mending trade back. So I'm hoping he's at a very decent price now. Let's take a look. All right, what are you gonna offer us, dude? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, so one book and one emerald gives us a mending book. And you know what that means, guys? We've got cheapest mending books possible and we can begin selling these. So as I previously mentioned, the way I'm gonna go about getting my emeralds is to do this. So we've got ourselves a uh, manual bamboo farm and uh, at the moment it is doing the trick. Let's go and harvest some of it real quick. And bamboo can be converted into sticks for those of you that don't know. So what you wanna do is just harvest all of the bamboo. And once harvested, you can convert it into sticks using this recipe. So every two stacks will give you one stack of sticks. So two stacks of bamboo is one stack of sticks like so. And I'm just gonna convert it all. And then we take it back into our villagers. And this time we're actually looking to the Fletchers. So as I showcased earlier, the Fletchers have this trade right here. 32 sticks for an emerald, but since they've been speaking to the guy that I cured, they've reduced their price ever so slightly. And you can just go through, spam that trade as many times as possible. That gives you emeralds and then you can just trade those emeralds for mending books. So right now we are currently trading 31 sticks for a mending book, which is kind of insane when you think about it. Ooh, oh, so it has been a grind, guys. It has been a grind to get to this point and have the villagers trading with us for virtually nothing. But there is one MVP in all of this, and that is my good friend, Endivar. If he didn't allow us to use that tunnel, we would have had to spend so much time, so much more time grinding this than we already did. So I think for that reason, we have to reward him. So I'm back over here at Hudlin House. I'm going to be purchasing one more shulker box from Hudlin. So there you go, Hudlin, another sale made. And inside of this shulker box, I'm going to place eight mending books and five diamonds. Now, I don't want my friend Endivar paying for mending books for a long time. So I'm going to stock him up and I'm also going to give him a nice five diamond treat because seriously, what he did for me saved so much time, it made my life easier, and I think it will also allow us to make a bunch of money for ourselves, so he deserves this. Just made it over to Endivar's Island, and I just wanna take a second to appreciate how beautiful this starter base is. This is my favorite build on the server so far. I've already made my thoughts clear to Endivar. He's an awesome builder, guys. Link is down in the description if you wanna go check his channel out at all. He's done some awesome stuff. I've been watching him recently. I would highly recommend it. So now that we're over here, we need to find a good space for the shulker box to go. And whilst we're doing that, I will just admit as well, this island right here, I actually wanted to claim this for myself, but uh, when I checked the Discord server, it appeared that someone already had done so, and it was Endivar, but he is doing us proud. I mean, look at this. 
Just look at it, guys. It, it's it's amazing. It's a really, really nice build. I think a good spot for it will be right outside of the front steps. So we've got our shulker box ready and loaded. Let me just get some signs down to explain this and we'll get back to our island. Here is the message we're going with. Without the villager tunnel, I would have had to grind so much more to get these books. So please accept this as a thank you. The shulker is also yours, Hocus. I think Endivar will get the idea from these signs and we'll leave this here for him. So let's get back to our island because I've got just a couple more things I wanna squeeze in before the end of today's episode. Nice, so I'm sure Endivar will enjoy his gift and realistically it didn't cost us much at all so uh, I probably could have done more for him but I think eight mending books and five diamonds will uh, suit him down to the ground as well as that shulker box, don't forget that, that's also pretty useful. Anyway, check this out guys. <laughs> Check it out. So we've got so many books, Mending, Unbreaking, and you might be wondering, Hocus, where did the Unbreaking come from? Well, I've got a bit more news for you guys. Let's take another look inside of the cube. And in here, we've got another dude, and he is selling us Unbreaking 2 books for one emerald each. So we're just buying two and combining them for the Unbreaking 3. And he's also got Infinity as well, which is another quite useful trade. I haven't bought any of those yet. We're going to be stocking Unbreaking 3 and Mending in our shop very, very soon, though. But before we do that, I've got one more thing to do on a personal level. So I just headed back to base to grab our Elytra, currently unenchanted, and we are gonna stick both Unbreaking 3 and Mending on there. So there we go, we've got our Elytra set up, and when I finally got access to rockets, we will begin using them. But I just wanted to make sure that we use two of our books to get ourselves sorted out, and now we can go ahead and price these into our store. Now, I've been thinking about exactly how we're going to structure the pricing for these items, and I am keeping in mind that Kieran Dev are in business over there selling similar items. And although this is an open market and I'm free to price these any way I please, I'm going to try to price them in a way that allows us both to stay in business for the time being. So for the mending books, which I'm going to put in here, uh, let me find another mending book first. There we go. So we can do something like that. I'm going to sell them in batches of two, I think, and I'm pretty sure that if I do it that way, like I say, it would allow us both to stay in business. I think Kieran and Dev will have to reduce their prices because I'm not going to go for the 10 diamonds each, but uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. And then for the unbreaking books, which we'll have in here, I'm going to just sell them singly. Um, singly? Is that a word? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to sell them one apiece because I don't think anybody else is supplying them just yet. So that allows us to just price them any way we please. So let me get the signs in order for these two items. So these are going to be the prices right here. Mending books, I'm going to sell two at a time for 15 diamonds. So 15 diamonds for two books and they're not to be sold individually. I'm breaking three. I'm going to sell for five diamonds per book. And I think both of those are fair prices. Now, the reason why I chose to do it this way is because again, I'm keeping in mind Kieran Dev they have their own store selling them singly for 10 diamonds. So what I'm doing here is trying to keep us both in business. So if I sell them for 15 diamonds per two books, that means that Kieran Dev will be forced to reduce their prices. And I'm not trying to do this to put them down or anything. I guess that uh, this is just the way the market works, right? In real life, it's a similar type deal. So they will be forced to reduce their prices to maybe something like eight diamonds. And that means that uh, if people are looking for two, they'll save a diamond by coming to me. However, if they just want the single book, then uh, they're not really paying that much extra just to buy the single one. And I think something like that would be fair. And as I say, allows us both to remain in business for the time being. However, for the Unbreaking 3 books, I'm free to price them as I please because I don't think anybody else is selling them. So I'm just gonna go with five diamonds. I think that's fair. And I will put this notification out to everybody on the Discord server right after I'm done recording this video. Hopefully we can make some sales. I did notice somebody's came in and bought a couple stacks of andesite from me, which is pretty nice. So we're up to three diamonds here. Nothing in the log chest just yet, but uh, we'll hold off. I think someone will be interested at some point. All right then guys, that is going to be all for episode four. And let me tell you what an episode this was. We've made great strides in the market, I think. And I'm sure that we'll make a bunch of diamonds off of this. I mean, here in Dev, they've made about a hundred diamonds off of selling mending books. So I'm pretty sure I can achieve something similar, if not in the short term, in the long term on the server, because I will continue supplying, restocking my store. And if it does end up being a race to the bottom in terms of price, so be it. We'll carry on and make as many diamonds as possible. But I just want to say once again guys thanks for tuning in today i really appreciate it any questions suggestions comments or feedback down in the comment section below that would be awesome and if you do want to drop a like then make sure to do that right now again much appreciated and if you are new here then first of all welcome my name is hocus 
Make sure to consider subscribing if you enjoyed this episode. There will be more of this, and I also run an LP world single player survival that you might also enjoy. All right, guys, that's all from me for today. Take care. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.